Or good day, depending on where and when you are watching this. Thank you for joining us. My name is Claudia Testerine Campbell, and I am the chairperson and president of the Daughters of Shiva Foundation. I want to thank you and for being here again. And I want to talk to you about a word from the Bible that holds powerful meaning, Ebenezer. Many of us in the West, at least, might have heard the name Ebenezer because of the character Ebenezer Scrooge in Charles Dickens' novella, A Christmas Carol. Because of that story, the name Ebenezer has taken on connotations of miserliness and a lack of charity. Although, to be fair, Ebenezer Scrooge did become a changed man by the end of that story. Aside from at Christmas, when these old movies are replayed, it's not a name Ebenezer you hear every day. However, it is one that carries deep significance. The word Ebenezer means stone of help, and it is found in the Old Testament, specifically in 1 Samuel. I believe that understanding this word or this name and its application in our lives can truly transform our spiritual journey. Ebenezer, as I said, is a Hebrew word that translates to stone of help. It is spoken about in 1 Samuel 7, 14, and represents a concept, a significant one at that, of divine assistance and remembrance. The prophet Samuel set a stone, set up a stone and named it Ebenezer to commemorate God's help in a great victory for the Israelites over the Philistines. This stone was a physical reminder of God's assistance in their time of need. Let's listen to a reading of that passage. 1 Samuel chapter 7 And the men of Kirjath-Jerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord, and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill, and sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, while the ark abode in Kirjath-Jerim, that the time was long, for it was twenty years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Eshtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth, and serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah, and drew water, and poured it out before the Lord, and fasted on that day, and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a sucking lamb, and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines, and discomfited them and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Bethkar. 
Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen, and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron even unto Gath. And the coasts thereof did Israel deliver out of the hands of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. At this point in scripture, the name Ebenezer becomes associated with an altar, shedding new light on its meaning. Samuel's prayers for his people to turn away from idols and immorality were answered with the defeat of the Philistines, the restoration of the land to the Israelites, and the establishment of peace. These blessings deserved to be remembered. Samuel's also served as a reminder to the Israelites of God's actions on their behalf. In a time of God's perceived absence and defeat, it provided them a visible reminder and a way to express gratitude to God. A stone is a strong and enduring material. It is often used to build solid structures, as we know, and can even help start a fire. In the same way, God is like a stone, unbreakable, strong, and a source of warmth and light in our lives. He's a God of mercy and steadfastness. Just as a stone provides a firm foundation, God offers us a foundation of support and guidance. Each of us has moments in our lives when we feel God's presence and help. These are our Ebenezer moments, times when we know that God has intervened. Remembering these moments can give us strength and faith in difficult times. And one way to do this, to remember these moments, is keeping a journal. As modern day Ebenezer believers, for the want of a better phrase, we might not want to place a stone in a location that a wrong done to us was righted, God fixed it, or we did not fight a physical battle, so we don't have a spot to mark where we won. But we all have found ourselves in mental or spiritual battles or warfare and have cried out for help in our times of trouble. And that call was answered. Let's not be ungrateful. And the next time we confront an issue, forget that there is a present help in our times of need. Keep a journal that contains prayers, scriptures, and quotes that, have, that speak to your hearts. During trials and triumphs, write in this journal daily. This practice will help you remember what source God has done for you. It's a way for each of us to keep a record of God's wisdom, guidance, and mercy in our lives. It serves as our own personal Ebenezer, a reminder of God's tangible help and support, our stone of help. In closing, I would love to encourage each of you to create your own Ebenezer. It doesn't have to be a stone. It could be a simple journal or an actual stone in a small place in your home or any other way that helps you to remember and reflect you know, on God's help in your life. These reminders are powerful. They strengthen our faith and bolster our sp spirits, especially during challenging times such as these. Remember, just like that stone Samuel named Ebenezer, we can face our battles with the assurance that God is always there to help us. Let us hold on to our personal Ebenezers and let them light our path with hope and faith. Thank you for watching and have a blessed rest of your Sunday. Namaste.
Thank you.